The short answer is yes, the brain only has so much space to store things. But thankfully, the long answer is a little bit trickier. It's Stephen Smale's famous 18th problem. One of the most celebrated mathematicians of the 20th century. He proposed in 1998, 18 distinct questions. Questions that if we were to solve in this century, we would reshape our lives as we know it. It seems deceptively simple. How much information can the human brain actually hold. I've taken the liberty of going through dozens of research papers, lectures and expert discussions and while I will admit the full picture is enormously complex, think of this video as a short overview of exactly why Smale thought that the human brain may be far closer to limitless than anyone ever thought. I'm about to give you three ways to look at intelligence. Not any single one of them answers the question, but when you put them all together, it gives us the best description of intelligence that we know as humans today. So come along with me. We all have roughly 86 billion neurons in our brain. Give or take a few billion, depending on the actual size of your brain. And each one of these neurons isn't lonely. They're connected by around 1,000 to 10,000 synapses each, and that all adds up to hundreds of trillions of connections that go on in your brain. This is what forms your conventional description of a physical memory like the hard drive on your computer. And you may think that this is way more than we will ever need. And to be fair, that is a lot. It's about 3 million hours of 4K TV or around 4.7 billion books. But what if the real limit isn't the amount of neurons or connections you have in your brain, but the brain's ability to change these connections? The brain wasn't built to hoard information. In fact, it was built to adapt, to overcome, and to, that's a Bear Grylls quote. But it's true, we face new problems every single day, and if the brain was just stationary, well, we would never learn anything, would we? Every night that you go to sleep, your brain, like a surgeon, cuts all of the weaker connections in your brain in order to leave space for newer and stronger ones to grow. In fact, by adulthood, around 40% of all the synapses you were born with have been killed off. And that's not because the brain is degrading, it's because it's learning, it's adapting. So this is the first way to look at intelligence. Maybe it's not how many connections we have or can have, but instead our brain's ability to adapt. It's not how much can we fit, it's how much can we keep accessible without our brain trying to get rid of it. Here's a little activity for you. If you were to close your eyes now and I told you to picture an apple, could you see it? Well, a third of the population can and a third of the population see a muddied, blurry image and a third see nothing at all, which if that's you, don't worry, you're the exact same as me, disabled. But for the people who can, try and keep adding these to your vision in your head. You've got the apple and then a banana and then a pear and then an orange. And if you've got four in your head, congratulations if you can see all of those. But now try and add a chocolate bar because I've definitely lost you there. Most people can only hold four objects in their visual memory at one time. And this is not dependent on anything. You could have the best genetics, you could be trained to do it, it doesn't matter. The limit is four. If you try and add more things to this image, you start to lose precision and you start to lose clarity. Scientists call it interference. This is when one memory overlaps with another memory and kind of blurs the edges. If you've ever failed to remember a phone number just after you've learned it, that's interference in action because the phone number you've just learned has been overlapped with all the other phone numbers that you have going on up there. And then there's decay, the natural fading of information over time if you're not rehearsing it. This is exactly why you have to revise for any sort of test you do, because if you're not rehearsing and getting that information in over and over again, it will start to fade over time. And that doesn't really make sense because as we've just talked about, there is hundreds of trillions of connections that are possible in your brain. So why not just keep all of the information? In theory, the brain should feel infinite with the amount of space that we have there, but it's practically not. And that's because the space in the brain where you actually think 
is shockingly small. And this is why memory management is so much more important than memory size. The brain has a workaround. It likes to chunk information into bite-sized pieces in order to process it in a better way. For instance, this is why a phone number like 0800 00 1066 is way more easy to digest than 61080008. It's the same numbers, they're just in a different format. They're using a different framework. So another way to look at intelligence isn't on brain size, but on memory management. And this raises a question of how much that you know is actually there and how much of it is just compressed little chunks mashed together in a loads of different ways. The brain on its own is an extremely powerful tool, but humans as a species have a sort of secret weapon, you could say. And that is our ability to offload information. We have been doing it for quite literally as long as we've been able to think. We've scratched things on the walls of caves, we've written books, and we've uploaded PDFs to the internet. These are quite literally extensions of our memory because what's the difference between storing it physically in a book comparing to storing it physically in the brain? They're both stored just on different mediums. It is a form of memory. And this has had a measurable effect on the population, especially since the dawn of the internet. For instance, there's a study that compares adults who regularly use the internet to look up answers to questions and a group of people who don't use the internet to look up answers to questions. And it doesn't have anything to do with how well they could answer those questions, it has to do with the health of their brain. The group of people that looked stuff up on the internet have a 58% lower risk of cognitive decline, and that's losing ability in memory or even in language. Just as you get older, the brain declines. Looking stuff up on the internet lowers the risk of that happening by 58%. It's almost as if technology has become a part of the brain's defense mechanism. And this raises such a fascinating question, because if we can offload all of this information into external memory, and if it's better for us to do so, then does the limit of the brain even matter anymore? Is the ceiling for our intelligence not what's in our head, but the tools that we surround ourselves with. The ecosystem of information that surrounds everyone. Now this isn't all of what Smale went into in his 18th problem. Like I said, it is incredibly complex when you dive into actually what the problem is about. But this way of looking at it, to me, just seems so intuitive. And if I must add uh, a little bit of cringe at the end, please make sure you're reading. Clearly it's extremely important. Or alternatively, you can watch my videos what if I told you that silence isn't actually silence? It speaks to you. If you want proof, the video's up there. But if not, uh, go read a book or touch some grass. Cheers.